Michael, what's been the biggest surprise of the last few days? Mm, I mean, getting a text from Michael Jordan today, that's, I'm a big Jordan guy my whole life. Uh, I was a little kid in Iowa saving 100 bucks for a pair of Jordans back in the day, and uh, pretty darn cool, to say the least. Could you share what he had to say? Uh, it was something in the way that um, what he saw is why he loves the game of golf so much. And the man of the hour, Michael Block, joins us now from Colonial. Great to spend some time with you. So MJ texts you. He saw something in the way you love the game. What did you text him back? Hey, Damon, hold on one second. Did you just say I have Ryder Cup points? You, do, you didn't know you got <laughs> Ryder true? Cup points? You, you're on the radar, Blocky. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, that's just cool. I can't even manage to be on the team, much less I just got some points. I never in my life thought that'd be uh, something I hear out of anybody's mouth. But uh, thanks for letting me know that. That's really, really cool. But, yeah, no, uh, getting a text from Jordan, I mean, just having him in my contacts is pretty, pretty cool. And uh, he's in... Invited me out because uh, I, I did request. I said, hey, I need to spend one of those 36 whole days out with you. And he uh, he said any time. So uh, I'm definitely going to make that happen. The rumor has it that a lot of people also want to get their hands on that seven iron you made the ace with. Michael, is it for sale? And if it is, what's the price? The original uh, email that I got was $30,000. Um, and I kind of jokingly, half jokingly said I'd hand deliver it for 50. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, not even believe it that I'd even say that. But uh, yeah, so now uh, quite a few people have been asking for it. And uh, my main goal, honestly, is it for it to end up in the right hands. Uh, so a lot of PGA professionals have the opportunity to see it. And uh, when I'm long and gone. Michael, you said a lot of cool things have happened to you in the past week. What's the strangest thing that's happened to you in the past week? It's just on a daily basis now. Um, I told a couple of people, but I mean, I, I come through the gates here in Texas. I have no idea. I just landed, came over, and I was going through the gates, and the uh, five gentlemen at the uh, front gate here getting into uh, Colonial started yelling and screaming block party as I drive away. Um, and I, I go, wow, this traveled, this traveled out in New York. So the, the gentleman making me an omelet yesterday gave me knuckles, and it's just these, you know, people are just coming out of the woodworks for that I would, I can't believe they know me. Uh, and for people to know me now is uh, a really a surreal item for me, and I'm, I'm trying to get used to it. And I'm honestly, I'm just trying to have fun with it. Michael, you beat the Masters champion by six. You beat the reigning U.S. Open champion by five, and you beat the defending PGA champion Justin Thomas by 11. How, what does it feel like to know at 46 you can hang? with the best in the world. And how many guys are there out there like you who are, who are teaching for a living who can do the same thing? I've been fortunate enough to play in uh, a number of events and I've uh, been able to uh, beat a lot of big names in the past. So that wasn't that new for me. Beating that many people in the same tournament, that was definitely new. Um, but uh, I've had a lot of, ex you know, a lot of friends back in Orange County that uh, are on tour that I play with that I've had the opportunity to uh, possibly get in their pocket here or there. And uh, so that's given me a lot of confidence when I do come out to these events. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy that that, uh, that week even happened and that I fin ended up finishing 15th. And I don't think I would have made that putt on 18 if I knew uh, what was uh, at stake on that. Michael, I read a quote from you back in 2014 at Valhalla. You said you are 10 times better on the course than you are on the driving range, where for most of us it's the exact opposite. Why do you think that is? Focus, uh, definitely. I think it's full focus, uh, how much I care on every shot. When I'm on the drive range, it's pretty lackadaisical. I'm not fully focused on a number. I like thinking 172, slight cut, stuff like that. When you're on a driving range, you usually don't, you know, you're hitting to a pin. You have no idea what the distance is. You're hitting out to the middle of a field, and it's just random hitting, which, you know, I don't think it's even effective. That's why I don't really practice all that much. One of my good friends, uh, Bo Hostler, out here, he, he doesn't even putt. He's such a good putter that he realizes – He's not going to get in his own way, so he doesn't even practice his putting. Um, I played a practice round with him for nine holes yesterday, and he didn't putt one single ball and will not putt until uh, today's pro-am. Michael, you, in the middle of all this whirlwind, you've got a tee time tomorrow in the Charles Schwab Challenge. You're also going to play the RBC Canadian Open in a couple of weeks. Do you feel any pressure to try to capitalize on those opportunities in a way that you might not have felt going into last week? 
Uh, not so much. I just want to go out there and play my game. Um, I feel like I have a little added pressure this week that I need to go score well. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I know everyone's rooting for me, but I know there's the haters out there, too, that, uh, you know, <laughs> they want to see the club pro shoot a big number, and I'm, I definitely don't want to do that. I want to be uh, there for all the people that are supporting me and all, all the lovers that are out there for me that I'm going to show them that that wasn't a uh, – uh, a mistake or, a, or an accident that happened uh, last weekend at Oak Hill. So I'm looking forward to here at the Charles Schwab, Schwab Challenge, obviously. And then, man, RBC uh, will be amazing up in Toronto. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to both. Michael, I think one reason people connect with you is because you play with your heart. You, you lead with honesty. You said something years ago that your perfect day was an off day at the club where you're playing nine holes with your, your young sons uh, at the club before the members came out. How often are you still able to do that with your busy lifestyle and schedule? Yeah, so what I've done over the last about two years, I actually got rid of a ton of students just to be able to do this because I knew time was going by so fast with my children. They were like 13 and 15 and they was going quickly. Uh, and so I'm like, I'm, I'm here teaching these people when I could be teaching my kids. So I got rid of quite a few members and students. Uh, so I had that time at about 5 p.m. every night. The boys come over there to this day at age 18 and 16 every single day. I work with them, and then half the time they're like, Dad, let's go play nine holes. And I'm just like, I just want to go home. And I'm like, you cannot say no. You cannot say no. This is, you got this opportunity in a couple of years, you kick yourself in the butt for saying no. So I always say yes, and they get me on the golf course a lot more often than I used to, which I think is really uh, trans transferred over to my play out here. You've got a pretty awesome date with your son coming up in a couple of weeks. Both of you guys in final qualifying for the U.S. Open. How much are you looking forward to that one? Yeah, so uh, that might have changed slightly in the way that the USGA contacted me this morning and offered for me to go to the Canadian site, which is on the Monday during the RBC, so I can uh, don't have to fly overnight on Monday night to get there. Uh, so it looks like the two blocks will not be in the same sectional at Hillcrest, which is too bad, but at the same time, now that opens up another spot in my mind for him or, or vice versa. So... Uh, that's okay. If we get two blocks, we can t get one from uh, out of Canada and one out of uh, Cali, and uh, I'll meet at LACC. Oh, that would be quite the story. Hey, Michael, there's New York and Texas don't agree on much, but clearly they're united in their love for Michael Block. Have a great week at Colonial. Best of luck. Thank you so much. Yeah, both states have the best people I've ever met, man. I'll tell you what.